Hello and welcome back to Lent with St. Edith Stein. This is Rebecca and I'm so glad you could join us today. This podcast is brought to you by St. Edith Stein Co. So please be sure to check out our store at stedithsteinco.com. This is a series of short reflections based on the writings of St. Edith Stein. Just little bits of philosophy to help you on your way during Lent. So let's begin with a prayer that St. Edith wrote. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O my God, fill my soul with holy joy, courage, and strength to serve you. Enkindle your love in me, and then walk with me along the next stretch of road before me. I do not see very far ahead, but when I have arrived where the horizon now closes down, a new prospect will open before me, and I shall meet it with peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In her essay, The Problem of Women's Education, St. Edith Stein wrote, It has been woman's mission to war against evil and to educate her posterity to do the same. This has been true of woman, including the mother of the Son, who conquered death and hell, but it will have to remain so until the end of the world. Yesterday, we discussed the notion of perfected humanity and how perfection is the goal of our religious education and spiritual formation. In this session, we'll drill down further and explore perfection as a woman and as an individual. As always, let's go back to Eve. She was created as a helpmate for Adam's sake, and this does not denigrate woman to say that she was created for man's sake. Unless, of course, we take that to mean that she exists only to cook, clean, and satisfy sexual desires. Or if we try to weaponize man's need for woman in an attempt to subjugate him, the relationship between man and woman should never be one of slave and master, but of partnership. So when Adam and Eve were expelled from paradise, Eve was given a particular mission— to create offspring that would crush the serpent's head. And this is reinforced in Proverbs 31. She cares for the needs of her family and others and raises up children who fear the Lord. This is a vital mission to prepare an army for God. Of course, we see this perfected in Mary. Mary and Jesus are the new Adam and Eve of the new covenant. However, unlike Adam and Eve, They do not become one flesh. And this is where the Catholic ideal of virginity originates. Man and woman need each other to make up for what is lacking in each other. And marriage gives us wholeness and complete union with each other. But rather than union with each other, Jesus and Mary each had complete union with God. Now, does this mean that Mary is too far away from us to be a role model? Absolutely not. Mary's identity is summed up in the statement, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Now, while men, particularly priests, are called to serve as the proxy of Christ in the church and in our homes, Mary does not represent Christ, but rather she stands beside him. She is always by his side, not for his sake, but for our sake. And this is the image of perfected woman, to stand by the side of Christ, always willing to serve others, helping them become what they need to be in order to wage war against evil. Now, each soul is unique and created with an individual purpose, so it's impossible to generally discuss what it means to find perfection in your individual calling. However, Edith says that especially needed are faith in one's own being and courage regarding it as well as faith in one's individual calling to definite personal activities and a ready willingness to follow this call. So always remember, you were created with purpose, with intention. And if you're not sure what your individual vocation is right now, I encourage you to spend some time in reflection or adoration if you can. Whatever your state of life is, wherever you are in your journey, God has a calling for you. God has a purpose for you. 
I want to thank you again for joining me today. And please be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at St. Edith Stein Co. I hope you'll continue to tune in as we reflect on the writings of St. Edith Stein throughout this Lenten season. May God bless you and may the saints be with you. Thank you.